Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Comic Conversation. I'm here with Justin and Chris. Uh, Edwin won't be with us tonight. He is off watching the Transformers movie. Uh, it is out for one night only, and it's on um, Fandango. So you can, uh, you know, if you were lucky enough like him to go check it out, you get to see the uh, the HD kind of remastered version of it up on the big screen once again. Um, I know we talked about that like a few weeks ago, right? Um, how uh, some of those scenes were... Uh, Pretty crazy. Um, but we're going to go ahead and talk about a lot of stuff tonight. We'll start off on a little bit of a somber tone. We're going to pay tribute to Norm Brayfogle, who passed this week. Uh, of course, we're going to get into, as we normally do, some Marvel and DC uh, you know, movie and TV-related news uh, reviews in terms of trailers and some speculation of what might happen in the future. Uh, we are going to review towards the end uh, Heroes in Crisis. Last week was all about Batman Damned. This week is all about Heroes in Crisis. DC's just bringing out the hits. Um, and uh, I do want to say, uh, once we hit uh, 40 subscribers tonight, or subscribers, 40 viewers, I'm going to do a giveaway. Uh, I have some books over here. This whole shelf um, is full of books that I am going to sell or give away. Um, so you pick a number, and you'll get to pick something out of there. It is completely random because they're facing the other way. I don't even know what they are. Um, so go ahead and share this uh, on your social media, wherever you want. Um, let's try to get uh, 40 people in here. Yeah. And I can the word, books, right? Uh, and full disclosure, I am moving um, close by, but I'll be moving in November. I have a lot of books. And I just don't want to move everything. So if I can like give some stuff away, you know, sell some stuff off, I'm, I'm going to uh, definitely do that. And uh, with that being said, we may be having an auction coming up uh, in the near future. So uh, a little tease there about what might be coming up uh, for us folks in this channel here. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and do some uh, catch up. Um, before we get to that, I want to give some shout outs here. We've got a few people in the chat already. I saw Iron Galactus. Uh, he came here early. He's at one hour and counting, so he was uh, definitely first. Uh, Big E's, home of the NMI Warriors, is second. Uh, great channel over there. They do uh, every other Monday, um, checking out the uh, new books that come out each week and you know, talking about um, slabs. I had Steve Borok on recently. Uh, really great show. Highly recommend it. Splash Page is next. He says he's third. Welcome, welcome. We got Jackio. Uh, thanks for being with us, uh, as you are every week. Really appreciate it. Also see Deadpool uh, Instagram. Thumbs up to you, too, sir. And I see Philly's Superman. So cool. Um, as people come in, I'll, I'll say hello to you, too. So, um, What have you been up to in the past week, Chris? Anything new in uh, Boston Chris Comics Land? Um, just, uh, you know, family stuff and things like that. Um, but... Just, you know, taking it easy, enjoying, uh, I guess, what's the last little bit of summer until, uh, you know, we end up getting now into, you know, the colder weather. Of the year. Um, <laughs> it, it was kind of nice for a little bit, very rainy, but kind of nice. Uh, yesterday we got a day in the 80s, and that's pretty much it for that warm weather. I think that, you know, the rest of the time is going to be cool. But, um, yeah. yeah, just, you know, just kind of doing my thing, uh, trying to get a little bit more organized with my books and, uh, you know, put up a video, finally, um, of <laughs> a bunch of the new books that I had, you know, yeah. got. Um, still have more books to show, um, so I'm going to make another video soon. But um, for now, just, you know, trying to just catch up with everything and, and just kind of in, enjoy, um, you know, just everything that's going on. So Cool. Sounds good. All right. Justin, what's going on with you, man? Oh, you know, stuff and things. Oh, wow. Stuff and things. <laughs> now, um, you know, normal good stuff, as always. You know, last week, sorry I couldn't be on with you guys. What was it Friday night that y'all went live? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, to talk about all the crazy Batman Dam stuff of last week. That was fun. I'm, I'm one of those, hey, I bought, I bought mine on Wednesday, and then Saturday <laughs> I found another one at cover price. So, wow. had a great On one. Saturday? Yeah. By then it was up in like already like the 50 or 70 okay. range. So. The story behind that is, is I walk into this, like it's, it's a card shop more so than a comic book store. Right. But he does get some new comics and he had one of those on, on the table. And I was like, man, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And, um, yes, Iron Galactus, I was playing magic. Um, and actually I'm getting ready for a magic tournament for a pre-release that's happening this weekend. So I'll be doing that on Saturday and Sunday. New cards. Yay. New cardboard cocaine. Um, 
as we like to call it. But all right. So I'm in the shop on Saturday. The book's there. Um, I ended up just, you know, I bought it or whatever. 15 minutes after I bought it, uh, the shop owner comes up to me and he's like, hey, what's the deal with that book? I just had somebody call and ask for it. Then I felt horrible because I had to tell him. I couldn't, I couldn't not tell him. <laughs> so I told him and then he went and looked and he was very sad about the eBay prices and things like Damn that. It. Yeah. So yeah. he missed out because he only ordered three of it. Two went to people that had pull list and I bought the third one that had been sitting there since Wednesday mm -hmm. that nobody grabbed. Yeah. You know what? He as a seller should know his product and exactly. market trends and that's on him to have yeah. known it. I mean, and, you know, I wouldn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel bad enough to like give it back or anything, you know? <laughs> You'd be like, okay, well, you see the eBay prices. I can sell this back to you right now. Exactly. For exactly. <laughs> yeah. Bottom, bottom down. Yeah. But I, you know, that was the A cover last. I picked up the B cover initially just because I liked it more. Um, so you know, normal fun stuff like that. Uh, and then yeah, so that's that's pretty much it, I guess. Cool. All, right. that's all cool, I can think cool. of. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so for me, not a whole lot in terms of, um, you know, collecting. I haven't really picked up much lately. Again, like I said at the beginning, a lot of books, I got a downsize and set upsize. So then the other way with my with my books. Lean and mean, right? That's what we want to do. Um, maybe put the money back into some uh, higher value books, you know. Or There's just, you know, fill, fill in those holes in the collection. True believers, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So I'll be doing that, uh, but I do want to say um, this, this is pretty cool. I got um, the confirmation this week, um, checking out Venom early. So I'll be um, seeing that, and it's weird with the movie. We'll talk about it, and I guess I could talk about it now. But we'll jump into the the Norm Bray focal stuff. But the movie comes out on October fifth, right? Um, most movies they'll give a you know, a week or so, you know, if they're really confident in how it's going to do, uh, they want to give like a week or so to, to get critics reviews out there, word of mouth, you know, some fan uh, reactions to it, spread the word, right? Get the excitement building for it. With this movie, you know, it comes out of the fifth. So basically midnight on the fourth, right? So we can basically say it's uh, 10, four at midnight, the embargo lifts on the second. And then the movie is actually the screenings. I mean, uh, the one that I'm going to, and pretty much all of them, are. Hey, how are you? <laughs> uh, the the actual screenings are on the third, so they're giving basically a day window. Um, that tells me that they're not so confident in the movie, but um, that I don't know. We'll have to see. I know we talked about um, the traction and the. Um, kind of momentum building into it. Um, and they're predicting good $60 million, you know, um, opening weekend. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see, but as soon as I get back from that, I will be putting up a review. Um, so it'll be pretty cool to, to see that a little bit early. So oh. excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a question for you, Justin. Uh, what guild are you playing this Saturday? Boros, which is red and white. It's what mm. I normally play. Angels and dragons and direct damage and stuff. Yeah. It's fun. I like angels and dragons. <laughs> yeah. Good combination. Right? Yeah. Um, both have wings. Flying uh, is the key in that game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Air superiority, man. Life right. gain. And That's the key in like a battle, too. That's Air right. superiority. That's right. Yeah. So, all right, cool. So, um, well, not cool, but this week, I think it was Monday, we um, got the news that. Norm Bray Fogel had passed, um, which is really sad. Uh, for a lot of people, he's basically, his Batman was the Batman. You know, we had like Frank Miller coming right out of that. I think really a year later, it was 1987 when he paired up with Alan Grant and started his run on Detective Comics, went to Batman. Um, 92, he did um, Shadow of the Bat. So from 87 into like the early to mid 90s, down. Batman. If you read Batman, enjoyed Batman during that time, you were enjoying Norm Brave Fogel's work. Um, you know, he was part of um, Nightfall, which for me is one of like the defining storylines for that era. I'd like uh, Maximum Carnage and Nightfall were like my two that I you know love from that era. So, yep. Um, yeah. if you enjoyed that again. You enjoyed Brave Fogel. He created um, Anarchy, the Ventriloquist, uh, Victor Zaz. Um, he was the guy who. Through the art where you first saw Tim Drake as Robin, mm -hmm. right? 
So that just kind of gives you an idea. And he was working with Alan Grant, who's you know iconic uh, writer. Um, he worked on um, Whisper for First Comics. That was his first um, monthly book. Um, yeah, Jack Kirk says uh, Brave Fogel drew the best capes, and his Batmobile was uh, badass too. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and then he also this is interesting. After he left DC, after he left Batman, he went over to uh, Malibu Comics. He worked with a couple guys over there. Um, Gerard Jones, I think, was one of them. And he co-created Prime. Oh, wow. Right? Um, which, um, it was very different the way the styling was in the book. Um, it was pretty unique. Not much like it on the shelves at the time. So it was pretty cool. Um, I know a lot of people read Prime. And I think that was a book that I sent you <laughs> back, Justin, if you remember. Yeah. Um, and then uh, <laughs> I, if, <laughs> if uh, Brian B. Um, is here, I know he likes the Spectre. Um, in 2001, um, he went back to D.C. for a year and uh, drew the Spectre. Um, and then it was in 2014, he suffered a stroke, mm. which, you know, pretty horrific. It paralyzed mm -hmm. like half of his body and it happened to be the body the side that he drew with yep exactly so he couldn't draw anymore um it was uh pretty sad you know kind of decline from there and what do you do so he decided to start writing instead try his hand at writing so he was uh when he passed uh at least in the midst of uh writing a novel i don't know if think it was finished yet um but what was really cool was after he had a stroke, a lot of medical bills and stuff. He did a, a crowdfunding effort. Tons of people donated. And uh, I do want to shout out the Hero Initiative. I know we've had Steve Borak on the show a couple times, and um, he's on the board for the Hero Initiative. And they help people who no longer have regular work in, in comics, right? They've been doing it a while. They got medical bills, you know, mortgage and stuff like that. So the Hero Initiative... Uh, is there to help folks like that. And they actually helped him out quite a bit as well. So um, if you ever need somebody to donate to, um, this is a perfect example of um, somebody who benefited from it. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty out there, being that most of these people are uh, like freelancers, they're independent contractors. So they don't, you know, it's not like a, a W-2 employee where you get like medical insurance and stuff. They have to figure all that out based on what they get paid. So yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people love this Batman, you know, like the, the big like crazy capes and stuff. Um, well, that I mean, to me, that was the Batman that I first picked up. You know, it was that time mm -hmm. frame when I was first picking up comics back in the day. So his Batman, his Batmobile, like that was my introduction to the character, really. So whenever I think Batman or go back, it's those issues like that first issue with Ventriloquist. That one sticks out of my mind that those mm -hmm. first issues with Tim Drake in the bat cave before he became Robin, you know, those are in my mind, things like that. So for right. him to pass, it's, it's, it's really a big loss um, for so many of us. That's where we started, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I, the, the cover that stands out to me is the anarchy cover with the building yes. and the big, like the A yes. or the circle. Yeah. Such a good book. Yeah. Such a good I book. Of, I can think of a ton of different covers that, you know, he was a part of that, um, you know, just stand out, you know, from memory and everything. And, and you, you know, talk about, you know, all the different runs that he was on, just like, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 and it's sad too, because you, you know, look at the, you know, his age and it's just like, he wasn't that old. Like, no, he wasn't, 58 he was years like, old. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's tough. Uh, honestly, I, I, I would put this, at least for me, um, in the same category, I guess, is, um, <clears throat> Hearing that, like you know, Darwin Cook was sick and then died like so quickly after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. you know, another guy that was you know gone way too soon. That just you know, um, you, you never really hear that specifically. You know, is is what actually happened. So, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, you, you're not going to get to see him. You know, do that art anymore and everything, and just yeah. you know. It, it, it is it is a tough one to to take just because of the fact that you know like you said and, and like Justin has alluded to is like a lot of the stories that we grew up with you know he did so it's just like you know exactly it's, it's, I bet it's, everybody if, if you don't know who he is I bet everybody listening or watching right now has Norm Brayfogle in their collection but they know absolutely. it or not it's it's in there mm -hmm. absolutely yeah it's in there.
if you have any of the Nightfall stuff, if that's the only Batman stuff you have, you have yeah. some of his stuff. Absolutely. That's right. So, so very sad. Um, and they didn't release the actual cause of his passing, mm-hmm. um, which you know we we don't need to know. That. That's you know a personal right. thing. But um, yeah, so sad news. Um, it kind of makes yeah. you want to reach out to like your favorite creators that are still around with us and just say thank you you know mm-hmm. like thanks for thanks for giving me something that brightens my day or gives me something to look forward to or something like that you know just because they could be gone tomorrow and you never had the opportunity to share that with them you know right mm-hmm. and it's so easy these days with social media you know twitter facebook they're all on there you know whether they're interacting in a positive way or not they're they're on there interacting so right um yeah yep. So, okay. So, uh, <sighs> rest in peace, good sir. Right. Yep. So, there yep. we go. Uh, Comics with Bueller's here as well. He says, hello. Um, what's up to you? Um, and uh, Stay Puff says, I need to post some Norm Brayfuckle comics on IG. I have a couple. Yeah, definitely do that. This is the time to do it. So, there we go, everybody. That'll be, that'll, we'll figure out somebody hashtag that and let's all do it tomorrow. That'll be our Friday yep. Instagram stuff. Brayfuckle Friday. Yeah. Let's yep. do that. Oh, I'm looking at a Silver Surfer number four. The price was reduced. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> so, all right. So let's get into uh, some of the kind of like the casting news and stuff like that. So uh, we have word. Uh, it's been a long time in, in the works, but Joker and, and Harley Quinn movie, spinoff movie, right, from the um, Suicide Squad. Um, word is out now that the script for it is complete. And uh, it's uh, by Glenn Ficar. He's the one who wrote it. Um, he said that it mixes uh, two movies, Bad Santa and This Is Us. Weird okay. combo. Right. So you want to hear the synopsis? Yeah. Right. Uh, this is directly from uh, Glenn Ficar. So he says, the whole thing starts with Harley kidnapping Dr. Phil, played by Dr. Phil, hopefully. Because her and the Joker are having problems with the relationship. We wrote Bad Santa a couple years ago, and it was that sensibility mixed with our this is us sensibility. We kind of meshed them together, he said. So um, you kind of get a feel for how it might be and it just the the craziness. I mean, they're going to have Dr. Phil be kidnapped and that's how it starts. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's kind of all about their crazy relationship playing off of each other. So that's essentially what the movie is. So interesting. We don't have a release date for it yet, but I would imagine this would be, oh, 2021 or so. They got a couple movies locked in for 2020, and that leads me to the next thing, which is Birds of Prey movie. Um, We got the news this week that uh, they have locked in a release date for Birds of Prey. It's coming out February of 2020. Um, It's going to start filming in January, so a couple of months from now. And uh, about a year later after that, we will get the actual movie. Um, And we also got uh, some casting news for it, too. Um, There's uh, Journey. Uh, Journey Smollett Bell, she'll be playing Black Canary, and uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who was in um, um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Mm -hmm. Uh, She is going to be Huntress. Um, So we have that. Um, Renee Montoya is also, like, billed as one of the the Birds of Prey. Um, We don't have any casting for that. They have a couple people have read for it. No casting on that. Same with... um, Cassandra Kane. We don't know if they'll be what their character. Yeah. So I mean, they they say Renee Montoya and Cassandra Kane, but we don't know if they're going to be the questioner Batgirl yet. We don't know if they're making right. that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say they probably will. Right. Yeah. Um, well, if they want to put a Batgirl, that means they could easily have Barbara as Oracle. Yeah, that's very true. We haven't heard anything about that, but I'm excited about the the new casting. I think. Um, for Huntress, I think that's a really good casting. I'm excited mm-hmm. to see what they do. Huntress has always been pre New Fifty Two. Huntress has always been one of my like favorite, you know, female DC heroines. I guess as it was like she's yeah. like she's more the Punisher than Batman. You know what I'm saying? So I always really like that aspect of that character. Yeah, no, she's really cool. Um, and then, um, as a reminder, the villain for this is Black Mask. So I think that's a pretty good pairing nice. for the villain of the team, right? Mm-hmm. He's like the gangster, and then yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Good, good street level, like crime boss mm -hmm. for them to go after. I, th I think that's a, that's a good way to open up their story. Right. So I'm in so far that sounds the most promising of the other books. Now the right. Harley and Joker movie, who's going to, is it Jared Leto? Yep. And then before that, we're going to see this weird Joker movie with what's his name? Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a lot of Joker <laughs> everywhere. Right. Well, you know, I, I like you say weird Joker movie. What's going to be like? It's it's going to be different because it's a whole new character, but it's also you know, strange in the fact that Joaquin Phoenix is older than um you know Jared Leto. So yeah. I mean, he, so it's just like that's supposed to be his origin, but he looks older than he is, I guess, at his current iteration so it, it's i agree with you very weird very strange and i understand that it's not you know supposed to be connected but mm -hmm. you know for all the casual people that watch the movies um it's gonna be something where you know people are like well what what happened to joker like how come he looks different in this one and and then he did in uh you know suicide squad and this and that you know what i mean so it's just yeah everybody is trained that like everything's connected now you know what i mean yeah so. So, yeah. yeah, it seems like they're just doing a lot of standalone. If they would go ahead and come out and say that the Joker movie, because it's going to have Thomas Wayne in it, an older Thomas Wayne, right? Why don't you just go ahead and tell us that this takes place in like Flashpoint universe or something? Right. Yeah. Don't don't have us guessing. Just tell us where it is, because otherwise you'll get ripped apart. If you come out, if they come out and say, "Yeah, nobody worry about it. This is taking place over here," everybody would be a little bit, you know, easier to kind of go for it you know what i'm saying yeah yeah like otherwise we are going to do this whole thing of where does this fit how does this fit in this doesn't make any sense right so. i i don't know like it, it, it is weird and different i absolutely agree with you guys on that but i don't want to say i'm excited for it but i just i have a, a feel like based on what i've seen and like the casting you know like robert de niro's in it and stuff um the description for it um i, I think it's gonna really surprise everybody I think so it's yeah. actually going to end up being pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't have any doubt that you know the Joaquin Phoenix one is going to be good. Um, th this other thing that you're talking about, I mean, I, I don't know. Really I, I still have. I still have a bad feeling just because of the fact that you know, just just because of how Suicide Squad went. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that that's just me. I I, I have yeah. no faith that um, you know a DCEU movie like that is going to do well. Um, you know, I think that the fact that it's outside of the other yeah, Joker movies outside of DC EU, you know, proper at least, right? Um, you know, they're going to be able to make a move that they want to versus making, oh, this is what we're contracted to do. This is just what we're going to put out there and hope that it works. So, you know, that that's that's the test that they have to pass for me at least. You know, is this going to be good? I mean, once we get trailers and everything else. You know, I'll be making my decision whether I'm going to go and see it or not. I probably, I'll, mm -hmm. be, I'll be honest with you, unless there's something earth shatteringly great about it, I'm not going to go see it. Yeah. I, I, I'm not so confident, like you said, about the Joker and Harley Quinn movie. It sounds like it's going to be like a little too, and I know it's the Joker, so it's weird to say that, but a little too jokey. You know, like it just sounds like, I don't know. I like, I like, and I know it's the Joker, so clowns, haha. -ha. But I like a more serious, darker tone with that character, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, because so. if if he's all, you know, if he's too campy, you can't, you you can't, you know, really have that whole, you know, um, suspense of like, what's he gonna do? Like, what what makes him sinister? What makes him, you know, mm -hmm. it's just that whole thing. Oh, he's just over the top and stupid. It's just like, yeah, this this guy gets annoying real quick. Yeah. Well, that's my thing is like, who's going to be the good guy? There's no Batman. That's true. Yeah. Like, is Dr. Phil going to fix that problems? Because it sounds like for <laughs> now, he's the hero. Yeah. I don't know. It's, really... Yeah, there's a lot of like, there's there's a lot of questions. I, I'm with you, yeah. though. I'm more cautiously optimistic about the Joaquin Phoenix uh, Joker film. Hopefully he sings some Johnny Cash in there also. So that'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Or at least listens to Johnny Cash or something. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so uh, Iron Galactus says, um, sounds like my Batman Harley Quinn number one will go up in value and then landslide drop after the movie. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Unknown says, Jared needs to go back to Subway. Uh, no, he needs to stay in jail. <laughs> I think he's in wrong. Jail. Wrong Jared. Wrong Jared. Oh, oh, Jared Leto. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought you meant <laughs> That Jared's in jail. That yeah, that's right. Jared's not, gonna be there for a while. In jail. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So we talked about movie. Let's swing over to the TV side. Um, we just got news uh, this week as well. A lot of DC stuff. Um, that you know, each each year they do a big crossover among their shows. Right. Last year was um, what was it? Crisis on Earth X. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. This year it will be Elseworlds. Uh, is the title uh, is going to go between it's going to start with the flash. It's going to swing over to arrow and wrap up with Supergirl. That should leaving, be interesting. Leaving legends out. Yep. Leaving legends out. I, I think that the it's else world. So, you know, flash speed force, you know, uh, multiverse somehow they'll be able to something will happen. Uh, and that's how they'll find a new multiverse or, you know, find themselves in one and that's where we will first see uh batwoman ruby rose's batwoman mm -hmm. um that should be interesting and we also got um this is pretty actually pretty big um monitor or anti-monitor um was cast oh nice right it's uh i do you know who la monica garrett is sons of anarchy who's on yeah. there mm -hmm. yeah so he's gonna play the monitor so um, that, that's just, pretty cool just such right. a weird name for a guy with monica yeah yeah because i was like who or, the, at first i was like wait the monitors is a woman that's yeah. crazy but i guess wear like big armor it doesn't really matter who's in the big armor but <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so i mean it i mean it should be good for the i mean for the most part i've enjoyed um what the cw puts out in their dc universe type stuff so i mean i'll definitely be watching it yeah, I'm excited to see how they do Batwoman, how they're going to pull that in, because I don't want it to be a situation like Supergirl where that she's, she's constantly on her own Earth and there's no way they can ever interact. You know what I'm saying? Because right. with Flash and Arrow, they will randomly help each other out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they won't be the big crossovers, but you'll randomly have like Arrow call flash for an assist on something or you know just you know something quick where he runs in right. real quick and and takes him somewhere or something you know just but for them to be in a different actual universe again that to me just hurts the, the continuity of it all stupid continuity right. dang continuity We're so yeah. trained by that continuity stuff that's right yeah i i kind of fell off of those shows to be honest with you but I do tune in for these, you know, crossover events. So I haven't really watched the current, the last seasons. Um, are they even on? I guess they are. They haven't started um, yet. Oh, they haven't. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, not that proves to you that I haven't seen them. Um, but I will definitely be tuning in for that um, that three parter. So sounds pretty well, neat. They're on Netflix. What? How long before they cross over with Masters of the Universe? Because Masters of the Universe has crossed over with everything DC in the past like two years. <laughs> So, He-Man versus the Justice League, and uh, what else? Yeah, uh, Justice, Thundercats. Uh, Justice, yeah. not, and the Thundercats, that's right. The only one they haven't done is Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine fun. that. <laughs> He-Man versus and, Daffy. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> that would be crazy. Fun. Yeah. So, I, I heard a couple of rumors. Well, I'm going to share these with you. Um we got a picture of Pedro Pascal, who's a mystery character in uh, the next Wonder Woman movie. Business series was like in the back of a limo. Um, and I have it on good authority that he is going to be Hades. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So some people said he might be Zeus. Um, some people said he might be Dr. Fate. Um, but um, according to my sources, uh, he's going to be Hades. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then from the same source, uh, the Supergirl movie that we've been talking about, um, it's going to be set in the 70s, and they're considering uh, Brainiac as the villain for that movie. <sighs> that makes so. sense. He's a tough sell, though. I Brainiac. mean, yeah. Why? 
do I like the the Brainiac on um, Krypton. That's a yeah. cool Brainiac. Yeah, but I that was hate good the Brainiac on um, Legends. Yes, that was horrible. Brainiac that was like five. Brainiac I think it was like five, dor- yeah. dorky Brainiac. Yeah, like the uh, <laughs> Legion of Superheroes Brainiac. Yeah, do not like that one. Um, my only thing is why why are they so caught up in doing period films? Yeah, it doesn't make sense that she was here in the seventies. Sure. But then again, with the Wonder Woman movie, it doesn't make sense that it takes place in 1984 and Batman didn't have a picture of her or anything from then. He only had the picture from World War I. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so yeah, that's I true. knew it again. Yep. He's like, what is she, like, you know, hide her identity? Like, I'm, I'm Wonder Woman, but I'm not Wonder Woman. Yeah. Like, Are you Wonder Woman? Shh. No pictures, please. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks, Stay Puff. I appreciate it. Um, so just as a reminder, if anybody new has popped in, uh, we are trying to uh, get to 40 uh, viewers. And once we do that, uh, giveaway, giveaway from the, uh, the giveaway shelf over here. Free stuff. Yeah. So share it. Um, tell, tell your friends. Tell your friends, wives. Come join us. Turn on all your computers and, and log in with different <laughs> user accounts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to give some stuff away. So, you know, help me, help me uh, get you some stuff. So there you go. Um, so Exorcist says, if the monitor is coming, then Lila is going to turn into Harbinger finally. Oh, could be. Yeah. That's a, that would be pretty crazy. Yeah. Hadn't even made that connection. Way to go, sweet Exorcist. Yeah. I like it. Seven. I like it. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much all we heard in, in terms of, like, DC stuff. You know, there's a couple, you know, they have, um, I don't know, I guess, like, th- three movies for 20. Actually, DC right now, we know more about their upcoming projects. It's kind of funny than um, than Marvel, right? Mm-hmm. Marvel has locked in, I think, nine uh, dates that just say, like, untitled, you know, that, those types of things, uh, all the way up to 2022. But the only movie we actually really know for sure is coming um is far from home right um and it's, i'm going to talk about a couple of things in a minute here because i heard something else i'm going to share with you um but then uh dc they have a whole like crap ton like we're just talking about the supergirl um what do we, what do we have Birds What's Prey, joker joker yep. and harley yep so yeah. spielberg's Aquaman. working on, spielberg's working on black hawk it's green lantern core black adam um, Ava DuVernay is working on New Gods, right? I think uh, Chris McKay's Nightwing is still a go. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, does a lot, right? Yeah. Whoever gets cast as Nightwing is going to have so much pressure on him. He's going to be doing squats all the time. Oh, God. Nightwing yeah. is all about the butt, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Batman's all about the other side these days. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just feel sorry for whoever gets cast as Nightwing. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. A lot of pressure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Sweet says, uh, I heard the Pascal may be a Maxwell Lord, but I like your choice best. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Iron says, future Marvel movies should say pending. Fantastic Four, X-Men. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I mean, we are going to get them. You know, it's pretty much at this point. With uh, Marvel, right, or with Disney, I should say they're working on the international approval stuff right now. Um, big win this week with, um, with sky and Comcast. Um, so Fox got rid of that. Um, so that's good in terms of this and approvals. Um, one of the big things that they're worried about is like antitrust and monopoly. So that definitely helps with that. Um, but until that's all done and confirmed and finalized, they can't like, you know, pretend that they have this because they can't move forward with things, announce things, say they have things. And then for whatever reason, it doesn't work. Then they, they put themselves in a, in a bad corner. So, and they, they did say uh, from the approval to when it's completely finalized, it would take maybe a year or so. So that next summer, mid next summer is probably when we um, at the earliest would find out any type of like crazy, like um, Marvel stuff. I mean, um, X Men stuff coming over to the MCU, so got a little bit of time to wait. But um, yeah, the big thing is the the mystery around Avengers Four, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're probably just holding every 
all the news until that comes out. Exactly. I don't want to give it away. Apparently the title is a giveaway. So let's we'll talk about Marvel. Let's talk Tennis. about, yeah. Um, X-Men dark Phoenix. Um, big trailer dropped this, uh, yesterday actually, wasn't it last night? Yeah. Last on, night. uh, James Corden, the late, late show with James Corden. So, um, you know, a lot of stuff leading up to it. Um, there was a lot of reshoots. Um, people were worried about that for whatever reason, even though reshoots are common. Um, mm-hmm. But it was delayed. It was supposed to come out in November, so a couple months from now. Pushed to uh, its current date, which is um, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Interesting Valentine's Day movie. Um, so, I don't know. What do you guys think of what you saw um, from the trailer? Uh all right. Well, who wants to go first? You, it it feels like you have uh, the strongest opinion, Chris. Why don't you go <laughs> ahead and take it? <laughs> yeah, why don't you take it away from here? <laughs> all right. Well, um, so I saw it, and I was just like, all right, you know, being objective and looking at it and, you know, trying to really, you know, see what it was all about. So at first, of course, I'm intrigued. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as I'm going through it, I'm just like, you know, they're kind of, you know, going over what, basically Gene's problem is at this point, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it just had a very, 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 very close similarity to X-Men The Last Stand. Mm -hmm. I I got that vibe the whole way through. So could be the the next last stand. (laughs) It's just like, you know, she has, she has this power within her, but she doesn't quite know what it is. And, you know, and Xavier is going to go ahead and suppress it, but like, he's not, you know, and, 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 you know, everybody's afraid of her, but they shouldn't mm-hmm. be, with, you know, they can't explain it. And then, you know, Magneto is pointing the finger at, you know, Charles, like, oh, you know, you shouldn't have done this. This is all your fault. Just like he did in the last stand, where it's just like, you know, you tried to hold her back, Charles. You should have never done that. Let her be free. And it's just like, so for me, you know, the fact that it had so much similarity to that, it, it really, you know, made me like, take a step back and, and not as excited for, for what is going to be in this movie just because of the fact that I, I've seen this before and I didn't like how the last one went. It, it was, you know, it, it really, I mean, I understand it's going to be more gene centric and everything is going to have more to do with her, but I just feel like they need to really like, like if it's going to be the same exact backstory and, and you're just kind of updating and making a second attempt at, uh, you know, just uh, making a good, you know, making a bad movie better. I guess mm-hmm. that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. You, you can't yeah. do. That. I mean, there has to be a better explanation as to how she came to, you know, to get this Phoenix Force. Like whether it was, I mean, my own thought, what I would do if it was me, is, um, you know, if you wanted to have it travel around, like the last host died and try to, you know, last host of the Phoenix Force died. And so in order to resurrect itself, it had to either go into, you know, um, a young child or something like that. So maybe mm-hmm. you have a baby gene that picks us up, you know, inadvertently, or it looks for the next most powerful being, you know, around it. And, you know, gene as a baby is, you know, the, the most powerful thing that it can find. I don't know. Something that kind of makes a little bit more sense than, than just, she's just got this stuff and we're just scared of her. So we're going to, Hide her off in the corner and make sure that she yeah. can't, you know. And I'm gonna put and Xavier's gonna put all these mental blocks and and you know shelter her away. It, it's mm-mm. it seems like she had it from when she was a baby. Like she caused that car crash with her parents, and that's kind of sort of yeah. like a car crash thing. But then I guess it's activated. You see when she's launched into space. Yeah. Right. The the plane goes up. I guess they're supposed to be rescuing like a shuttle crew or something. But then that's when they're bombarded with the cosmic rays and stuff. And it seems like that's the point. Though it's like it's remember X Men Apocalypse. Yeah, it was already it was already the Phoenix. But then right. again, but but I'm I'm sure that's gonna be I'm sure that that part's you know supposed to be like you know supposed to like like prequel to it, and then you you get down to now modern day troubled Jean who can't make her mind up as to like what she's gonna do, and you yeah, know. There, there's a couple like there was a scene that looked like the the young Jean. Really young Jean was at the X Mansion, right? Right. So she's so. been she'd been with Charles since she was like eight, you know. Yeah, but that Something doesn't like that. line up with Apocalypse either. Right. Yeah. 
they've got a lot of holes in their story. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, but but for me, I mean, so long as they can explain that and not make it like you know too much like you know the, how the last stand was, and they just they can't explain how this all came to be, like then that's gonna upset me a little bit because. I just I don't want to relive that. That that was a horrible piece of shit, and that, that, oh. that's all I'm leaving it. Yeah, it was. It was uh, the last day was a terrible movie. Iron Galactus yeah. made a good point. He said, "Did you say they were rescuing astronauts in space who were irradiated?" That'd be cool if the FF showed up, right? Doesn't have to, yeah, if they just you know, who's this <laughs> rich character? Since it's their last two raw with these characters, they might as well just throw them all in the movie, you know? Right. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. That would be pretty but this, cool. now this isn't being this is you know Fox's last movie with it, right? Well, it's X Men yeah. proper. The last like X Men movie is New Mutants. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. Yes, so so it's not quite being done by Marvel just yet. Correct. Right. All right. So so that 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 is fine by me because you know I just I mean for them to continue on with what they're doing because like someone had made a comment like oh this is. The first introduction to a Marvel, you know, X Men, and I'm like, how is that no, possible? No, it's not. No, they don't like. You don't think they would recast and like put it under their own banner first, and not just have a bunch of established people? You know, I mean, I, I don't know if they would keep that same cast or what they'd want to do with it, but I figure that you know, th there's got to be other people that you want to cast in those roles, and and the, you know, other stories you want to tell in, in the way that they can. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while before they merge into the MCU. If oh, she yeah. if she kills Cyclops, I'm walking out of the theater. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Who do you think dies? They were at a funeral. Uh, My guess is Mystique. Yeah, she she Man, looked like she was dying. At one point. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like with Jennifer Lawrence, like she doesn't like the character being the character. Like it was yeah, she wants to be done. The, with it. It, yeah, it took a lot of convincing for her to come back for this. So I mean, I don't know. And then it, it kind of plays with with the story, you know. With Beast, with Hank, and then with yeah. um, with Professor X, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. Did it what three times? This is a, this will be our fourth time playing that role. Yep. Yeah. Less uh, of a phone in experience than the last time I was. Based, we saw a couple scenes, so I'm basing it off that. But yeah. My my yeah. problem, like I, I I can't like if you're gonna go ahead and Natalie Portman it, then then you should have quit a long time ago. Well, it's done. But here's my Stay Puff, Stay Puff said the animated Phoenix saga. Uh, he'd rather watch that than the mediocre movie. Yeah, there's no way. Gonna, <laughs> oh, there's yeah. no way they're going to top that. Those few episodes of the Phoenix. That was saga. awesome. Those and were the amazing. Best part about those was that they they knew that they had something special because that was on um, primetime television. I remember that. That yeah. was uh, Friday night at eight o'clock. You had to tune in, tune in two weeks to see it. <laughs> you remember the time? I'll never Dude, that, that that was at the time. I think I was about. 10 years old mm -hmm. and that was the greatest I, I, I was so happy because I remember they innuendoed it and like the phoenix and all of a sudden they, they had, you know, the world was on fire and I was like mm -hmm. oh and they're like the phoenix saga is coming and it's like it's gonna be on Fox at a special time 8 o'clock I was like oh shit I was at my grandmother's house I was like I'm watching this I told her straight because <laughs> I was like hey, Grammy, I'm watching this and she's just like okay right through that like I know I'm just letting you know that's what's going on the TV right now yeah, exactly. They Stave of said they stuck to the source material and it worked out perfectly. It did. It was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eric the Red. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Gladi awesome. Gladiator shows up and then punches like yeah, he uh, punched uh, Juggernaut into the into the river. No, he right. punched him over the ocean. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and then the Juggernaut was bad and he's like you see him walking on the bottom of the ocean. Yep. Oh, oh man. So that's good. the first time you got to see uh no, that wasn't the first time you saw uh Deadpool. Deadpool was later on. That was like the onslaught issue, an onslaught episode. But like, uh, yeah, man, that that was really cool. The way, they, and then they, uh, when they had the trial, and you saw the X Men fighting the Shia Imperial God, that was cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, Stay Puff, I'm with you on that one. I, I would love it if they could just adapt that animated series into live action. I'm in. Yeah. I watch both parts of it because it has to be two parts. You can't do it in just one. Fine, you could do it. Maybe Marvel will be that brave. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. Could you imagine? But, the, but I mean, the, the, we're yeah, gonna, get, we're gonna get a awesome. new. We're gonna get a whole new X Men cast oh, whenever yeah. they start it. So we'll see what they do. It mm -hmm. may, I mean, like it makes sense, and, and and for them to set themselves up, um, with that, I mean, because like once you establish the X Men, 
you have a whole new franchise of movies to go, and then the Fantastic Four. So it's like you you can step away from the Avengers for a good like five six years, and then just like, hey, Avengers, we 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 look a little different, but we're back, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that like that that I'm excited for because you know there's so many possibilities of what they can put on screen that that's going to be really cool to see like when they finally do. So those I'll be excited for no matter what. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this one I'm 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 I want them to prove to me that they're not going to X Men three me. That's it. That's all I want. Yeah. We'll have to see. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more. Well, I'm sure we will. Um, for February. <laughs> Sweet so. Exorcist. Yeah. After Red well, Sparrow, was- mother, she, she's going to need this X Men movie. <laughs> that was my only thing. Is like that whole trailer. Cyclops didn't blow anything up. Mm-hmm. It's no, true. no energy blast from Cyclops. Oh, he was like, like sad. Like, She's off. Oh She's no, well, that, was, that was my thing. Is like, is she gonna kill him? Yeah. You know what else was missing? Hmm. Wolverine. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's no Wolverine. Yeah. Well, he's still like, if they're going with that continuity, he's still like feral and angry. So. Cool. Yeah. Put that on the screen. I want to see <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny. Just came. <laughs> just... <laughs> what the hell was that? I don't know, but we're just gonna let him go away. Want nothing to do with him. <laughs> Con- like Sweet Exorcist says, if Dark Phoenix is a hit, they won't recast. I think they will, no matter what, just because oh, yeah. of contracts. Absolutely. You just know? Because, yeah. I mean, especially if someone's getting paid more money than they want them to. Absolutely. Yeah. Like what? What I what I would agree with is you. You'd want to. I mean, because McAvoy does a good job, you want to keep him. But you could you could recast uh, Fastbender because I bet you Fastbender makes a lot of money now. Yeah. Uh, more, more I, I like his did. Magneto. I don't like what they've done with the character, all, like his flip floppiness all the time. Right. Yeah. But I, I think he's a really good Magneto. He is. He's a, he's a great Magneto. I, yeah. I just think that. But I just think that the other movies that he's been in, I mean, his, his price tag now versus first yeah. class is yeah. definitely way higher. So you, oh, yeah. you got You got to Like McAvoy, honestly, I don't think his price tag has changed that much because he hasn't been in that many things that, like, you know, make him stand out and that much bigger. Um, but so so you could probably retain him. Um, fast bending, you gotta let him go. He's too expensive. But like um, I said, they've already done the, they've already done four movies. A lot of these actors and actresses want to get away from this property now and do other things. So right. like, do you keep Sophie Turner on? Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like because she's young and because she's gonna be coming off of Game of Thrones, she's gonna want to do a lot more projects that like yeah. you know she can expand her range and really just kind of make a lot of money. So right. That, yeah. that, that's where I see that going. Um, and well, she may not even make it out of this movie, you know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. They could all die. Yeah, that, you know yeah. that'd be the way that that Fox ends it with them. They're like, oh, oh all the X Men died. Yep. <laughs> the screen goes black, and you know, they're just done with the franchise. That's big <laughs> asteroid with an animal that's coming. Gene, can you do anything? I'm just tired, guys. I'm so tired. <laughs> yep. Good yeah. job. It'll be crazy if Thanos shows up. <laughs> no, that would be even better. Like they just all fade away. Like oh, they they just yeah yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, he got us. That would be awesome. Even though it, so the, the the snap would be going back in time though. It would be going what's like the 90s. would it? Well, yeah, it's know. set in the nineties, so uh, Captain oh, yeah. Marvel's time period. Oh yeah. Oh, imagine she eliminates them all. She's like, yeah. you guys are a threat. <laughs> Oh man, I mean, are they, like, or they look at their pages and they're like, "Damn it, Nick Fury." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So yeah. it's, it's all up in the air. We're all kind of eh, on this one, you know. Yep, exactly. We've been disappointed so many times with X Men movies. But... Yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was very like, I don't want to say dark. It was like somber, you know, mm-hmm. like people yeah. were sad and crying. It was always raining. Rain. Yeah, and like I get that that's the tone they're going for, but I can't really get excited about that type of thing, you know? Right. Yeah. So like, that and there was like no action. Like like I mean that that's the one thing I can say. Like when you when you have X Men movies, you expect to see some sort of action in the trailer. Whether it's and, and that might be the lack of Wolverine. You never know, but like, yeah. there's, there's got to be something that like makes it stand up to be like, okay, this is cool. Like, I want to go see this. Um, yeah. and, and it really isn't. It's, it's it's more like like you said, just people like coping with their feelings, and and just you know, it's almost like, uh, I guess similar to like a movie like the Exorcism of Emily Rose, where it's just like they're all focused on this one girl with a problem, 
and how they're going to deal with her being, you know, kind of just messed up and w w what happens next. And it's just like, you know, I, I mean, I don't know the subject matter because I never saw the movie. I just remember that the trailer was all about, we got to talk to Emily because there's some, <laughs> something not right about her. And that's pretty yeah. much what this is all about. Yeah. It's all Charles's fault. Everything's Charles's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And stop why apologizing. <laughs> why, why do they always want to make Professor X cry in every movie? He's always right. again. Yeah. again. He and it's funny. Be the Rock. Yeah. Well, you, know, you know what could happen at the end of this? Mm. What they alluded to in Logan. Oh, oh, the event. The event, exactly. Nice. But isn't yes. oh. where all those people died? Yep. And there's your death with everybody. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. It's fast forward to like you know the date of the event. So they just put on the screen the event. Like what? What? That could be <laughs> after credit scene. I was on. And then that's that's it. <laughs> and then you just have Wolverine just come in. <laughs> and then and then like Gene just flies off into space. Yeah. Either that or, or or then it's uh then it's uh Wolverine being like. Charles, this is all your fault. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. It's like, Charles, get in the car. We're going to Mexico. <laughs> I always wanted to be a limo driver. That's right. The only um, one that didn't die is Caliban. We got to deal with this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, cool. So, okay. I know I said that um, we don't know much about what's coming out from Marvel, MCU, Marvel proper. Mm hmm. Uh, after Avengers 4, but we're going to get uh, Doctor Strange 2, right? The sequel. Um, right. It's pretty much guaranteed. You know, most most of them do a trilogy. And I think Avengers is the first one to do a uh, a, a fourquel. What would you call that? A quad. <laughs> a quad, yeah. Um, so Doctor Strange 2, uh, there's a few movies locked in, unknown, untitled, for 2020. So I would guess that might be around that time period. But get this. This is why I'm mentioning it. Scott Derrickson. He's the director, right? Um, on his Twitter page, he put up a um, a picture of um, – and then it's like a little caption. Uh, the picture he put up is from What If? Issue number 18. Ooh. Are you familiar with that one? No. Uh, That's an issue with Doctor Strange where he had Eternity – and Dormammu, and he had to choose between good and evil. And the picture he put up, it said, I choose good. And then what Scott Derrickson put on the bottom was, until I don't. Mm. So a couple takeaways there. Dormammu looks like we might get eternity. Um, but it also, based on what he wrote down there, that tease, looks like we may get a uh, darker perhaps evil Doctor Strange. Corrupted by the power. Yeah, of Dormammu. Mm. So that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. Evil Strange. I mean, who takes that down? I don't know. You know, just because, uh, I mean, Wong ain't powerful enough. I'm sorry. Just No. <laughs> I mean, would you, would you reintroduce uh, the, the ancient one? Like, I didn't really die, Steven. I don't know. I mean, it looks like if they're going to have Eternity in there, it might be a cosmic being that has to take him down. Yeah, so and we know that they are back. doing, like, the Celestials and stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. The Living Tribunal comes back, it's like, I gave you my staff, and this is what you do? Exactly. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that was in there. That was in there. See, they mentioned it. They mentioned so staff. much stuff in that film, so. I mean, I'm excited that the here that we're actually going to get it because that one, that one was the most kind of out there of the Marvel films. Yep. And mm -hmm. I thought they did a good job with it. I really enjoyed Doctor Strange. So. And what's this I hear about you letting people lean on the cauldron of the cosmos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just comes out and like yells at him like a high school principal. I'm going to show you what I have here. So this is it. Oh wow. <laughs> Quadrilogy. Quadrilogy. <laughs> there you go. Quadrilogy. Yeah. Um, oh no. I choose good until I don't. See. Nice. Is that when he got the? Was that was that in the nineties when he got that weird costume? No, this is uh, from the seventies. Oh, okay. Black and red one. Yeah. He looked yeah, this, like Spawn. This the issue where oh. this piece comes from is from nineteen. I don't know, late seventies. 
So nice. So yeah, sounds pretty cool. Nice. So I wanted to share that with y'all because I haven't really heard anybody talk about that, but yeah, it might be interesting. And um, e having Eternity show up, I'd be happy about that because I got the first appearance over here. <laughs> <laughs> the um the thing that's kind of um to think about with that is that is he is he choosing um you know I guess to go evil in, in some type of way shape or form where he has no choice but to go evil in order to you know allow for things to go right because I mean maybe he has to side with Dormammu in order to set things right. He's he's yeah. gotta go to the dark side to save Padme. <laughs> <laughs> Although Palpatine never really told him how to out, he's like, look, just just trust me. Things are gonna work out. It's gonna be fine. And all of a sudden he's like, what? It's not fine. What the hell did you do? Oh man. That would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Smith is here. What's going on, Jason Smith? Alright, I'm gonna show you guys another picture. Very blurry, very grainy. But oh, the Noir suit. This is, yes, exactly. This was captured on the set of Far From Home. This looks like a stealth suit. Um, also, very much like you said, like uh, Spider-Man Noir. I actually pulled this off of my uh, my Twitter page. Easy yeah. way to find it. Everybody's been going nuts saying, oh, it's the black suit. We're going to get the black suit, Spider-Man. It's going to be awesome. It's not a symbiote. Uh, right. Symbiote. I mean, it is a black suit, but not what you're thinking. Right, exactly. It's not Venom. So that's the comparison, that picture. The goggles, the black. He washed, he washed the... his suit with a black pen in the pocket. That's yeah. cool, <laughs> I like that because uh, the Noir Spider-Man is, is pretty cool. Like He's, he's you, know, um, you know, definitely a darker version of Spider-Man. And he's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he, he's all about just, you know, by any means necessary. So that, that would be kind of cool to see a contrast between, uh, you know, what we have now and, right. uh, you know, oh, the, the, the Spider-Man that we're used to, which is, you know, that quirky team, you know, versus, you know, this guy who's just like, you know, out to take care of whatever he needs to. So I like that. Um, I'm hoping that we see uh, 2099 in this as well. I mean, you know, I don't know how many different Spider-Men they're going to be able to put all at once, but that, that would be cool to see. 2099 is one that I'm really hoping to see. Yeah. This movie uh, is shaping up to... That would be shock. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't care about uh, I don't care about uh, Scarlet Spider at all. No, that, that doesn't bother. No, me. we don't want clones. We don't. We don't no, even want to think about. Don't clones. even go down that road with Marvel. Twenty ninety nine. You better be there. You're you're invited, sir. Because you're the best around. He's yeah. cool. I love this. I love this suit. The suit is really. I do cool. too. Oh yeah, the original one, not the newer one that they made that was like right. white yeah. and silver and whatever. But yes, yep. the original Spider-Man 2099 suit is amazing. I always wanted to see uh, him, the original one, team up with Batman Beyond. Yes. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. If Marvel and DC would ever, you know, quit being uh, ridiculous and uh, get back <laughs> together for some more crossovers like they did, that would that would be one that everybody would scream for. Right. right off the bat, you know. Hey, I I buy all the covers. Oh, I would too. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, cool. So, another trailer that came out this week um, is for Bumblebee, and I was kind of like not really excited for Bumblebee, just kind of based on like everything that we've seen with the um, the Michael Bay stuff. I'm like, come on, man! Like, just give us some G1s. Transformer burnout, right? And I guess thinking that millions of people like just give us those original designs, damn it. Um, it worked <laughs> somehow. Um, new director here is not Michael Bay uh, for Bumblebee, which comes out um, in December, along with a few other movies. But what's really cool, and what I wanted to talk about was that we actually got to see some G1 designs, right? The actual like the original Optimus Prime, original Soundwave. Um, we got a bunch of the um, the Decepticons. You got to see like Shockwave. Um, Ravage, right, was in there. Yep. Um, with Soundwave. Yep. And then a bunch of them that I forget the name of them, but they were like the, the the fighter wing. You know, they were the aerial ones. Uh, the, like the, um, Thundercracker Ram wing. Jam. Right. Skywarp was I think was another one. Skywarp Thundercracker Ram Jam. Yeah. Um, 
what were they called? That it was like a group, and they had a name. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, but um, I think it's really cool that they're going back to those original designs, and I hope it's not just like flashbacks because what where we saw them was on Cybertron, wasn't on Earth. So I hope that we get to see uh, some more of them, other than like quick flashback type of stuff, you know. So. I know. What'd you guys think of that trailer? Uh, I think they were called the Seekers. Oh, the Seekers. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That sounds right. Uh, but it, but it really doesn't make sense that they would have those forms before coming to Earth. Right. Like, how would they know what a truck looks like? Right. Oh, you're a jet. We didn't have jets here, so why aren't you a jet? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Yes, they look those those stills like. You know, you see it, but you've seen like the actual people pull the stills from those. Um, yeah, those look awesome. So that that makes you want to go, or at least get excited for that. But like you're saying, if they're only showing us them in those forms and flashbacks, mm-hmm. it may still be worth it just to see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I'll say it for myself. If, if it's just in flashbacks, I'm not wasting my money because of the fact that. Um, you know, and I know it's not Michael Bay, so you know, mm-hmm. great. But the thing is, though, you know, I just I don't want to be teased. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Like, if it's only a flashback, that's that's. If it's only a flashback, and then you're gonna give me, you know, th- this new, um, you know, new age Transformers, and then the way that they were from the Michael Bay films, uh, it's still a slap in the face to me. And I'm just like, uh, no, G1. Hopefully, I mean, if it's a battle and they go back to Cybertron, perfectly fine. I can deal with that. Um, but if it's like, this is how the war was before, you know, nope, not having it. That, that's just me. I just, I just, I feel like at this point in time, I mean, you know, you know who that audience is, is being marketed to completely. Mm-hmm. As much as they want to be like, oh, it's for the kids. And it's, no, it's not. It's for all of us who grew up watching it. Exactly. And if all you're going to do is just keep insulting us by, throwing you know new designs onto what should be generation one characters then i mean there's no point for me there's no point to spend my money on it because just like i'm not gonna get what i want like you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. i still remember i remember being super excited the constructor cons are in this one awesome devastation to be in it i love the constructor cons one of my favorite groups of transformers of all time and i know what i got i was not happy damn different i'm still mad about that you know i mean that looks awesome it looks really cool um, the point, the, the biggest problem is though, is, is that if that's just in a flashback, like, oh, this is what the war was like when we were kids, or this is what yeah. the war was like, and and now we're here to prevent this from coming to your, you know, to get to your planet, no, yeah, nope. I like that he went back to his original like tape deck. Yeah, design, you when know? he was a satellite in space, I wanted to throw something. Are there Mercedes? Was so was he a Mercedes at one point too? Uh, I don't know because I, I I saw Transformers too, and then that's when I stopped. That's I didn't stop, man. That yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it looks really cool, and uh, you know, I'm I'm definitely you know hoping that it's going to be an actual battle scene. So maybe what I'll do is wait until after it comes out, hear what people say, and then mm-hmm. specifically ask them. So the Generation One Transformers, like, what was that all about? Like, how did that work out? Oh, it was just a flashback. Uh, done. Skipping it. And they're like, no, they had this big battle, and it was really cool. All right, I'm in. I may actually, just, to be honest with you, I might just probably pick up a ticket for another movie and then just wait and be like, so what part of that movie, what, what part is in? Oh, it's in the last like 30 minutes. Okay. And then just, you know, check this. Oh, last 30 minutes. Go watch that and then just walk out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah. I, just, I saw what I, I know what I came to see. Just yeah. That. Don't care about the rest of it. <laughs> just I that one know how scene. this girl and Bumblebee become friends. I don't care. Yeah, uh, Jason says he was a Mercedes in the third or the fourth. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right. It was a SLS, like really nice car. Yeah, no, no, no one cares about the, no yeah. one cares about the third or fourth uh, Transformers movie. The the Bayformers. Yeah, no, no, no one yeah. cares about those. If you watch past the second one, so the first one, they, they, they fooled us. The second one is where you realize that you got scammed for a second time, and you're like, you know what, I'm done with this shit. Yeah. But if you stick around for three and four. There's no saving you. <laughs> like you, you, yeah. you just you, you just love this stuff. Like you know, it's just like you love the torture. 
Mm. Shout out to uh, Brian B. For Take the time collectibles. Brian B. He said he just got back from watching the Transformers 1986. It's on the big screen. That's right. See, now you want to see some G1? That's all you need. That's where you go. Right? Yeah. That's what I should do. I should just go in there. What like get an old school boombox? Just you got the touch. Like that's not. Yes. I'll yes. <laughs> be dead from that movie theater, but I guarantee you, that'd be something cool. It'll be worth it, right? Everybody yeah. will start singing along. <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny. All right, cool. So that's uh, hopefully we get more. That I guess is the takeaway there, right? <laughs> so um, let's switch gears. Um, kind of give this over to Justin. I know he's excited about this. Um, we got uh, news. I think it came from um, might have been Variety or I don't know one of those. Um, Rift War Saga is going to become a TV series. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's uh, Ray Ray Feist, Raymond Feist. Mm-hmm. Um, really, uh, like best selling iconic uh, fantasy um, novel series. Yes. It's going to be um, um, written by Kurt Johnstad, who wrote Atomic Blonde. I don't know if you saw that. Um, mm-hmm. That same screenwriter. Um, a lot of stuff there. Um, we were talking about it beforehand, like some of the books that you read, but the whole saga it was like, uh, I can't list them all. I don't want to do that. Yeah, there's like Magician Apprentice, Magician Master. There was the sword something that I can't remember. There were several books. Um, to me, like this was, I found this after reading Lord of the Rings. And this was something that kind of, I mean, it, it falls into that kind of category. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of it's more magic based. You have um, uh other worlds that are involved you're not just on one planet there's actually like another a gateway that gets you to another world another dimension type thing um so it's just there's a lot involved in it there's a lot of of great characters um that i think a lot of people will just really latch on to if you're Mm -hmm. you know if you're a lord of the or if you're even if you're a game of thrones fan this like takes it to the next level this gives you all the stuff in the forefront that you wish they had in game of thrones like you you have magicians everywhere you have enchanted armor you have you know swords that are named for things and for a purpose um it's just in the way it builds up is so good so i'm i'm beyond excited for it that this is finally getting an adaptation and i know that raymond e feist has held off for so long Mm -hmm. um about giving it giving it to a studio of any sort because he wants it to um be as close to what he created as possible. Uh, so again, that's just super excited for it. I think, I think it's got a, a great audience already out there waiting for it. Mm-hmm. You know, people that have already read it, um, Lord of the Ring fans, they're going to jump on this. Game of Thrones fans are going to jump on this. So I think I it's part of it. And then, uh, yeah. just the description alone is being okay. It's so because cool, that right? scene, I'm all about it. Like, I, like, I love that stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the whole series is like best selling, you know, they did a, a five-part mini for Marvel. We were talking about that. And I also see, um, I looked it up, um, two games, role-playing games mm-hmm. on the computer. And those three cases are the only time Feist has let anybody else like work on his own. So this is surprising, yeah. you know. <clears throat> now would be a good time to go try to find um, first editions of Magician Apprentice. That was mm-hmm. the first one. That's the one you want to go look for. That sets up everything in that book. And it's so good. And the cover's so cool. Yeah. Let's see. He had Rift War, Serpent War, Dark War, Demon War, Chaos War. Lots of wars. Yeah. Wars everywhere. But there's a rift between this world and the next. That's right. Dun, dun, dun. Do you think this? it lends itself pretty well to a TV series versus a movie just because of the the amount of story there, right? Yeah, I didn't. I mean, did we hear like what is it like, like, like an ABC or is it like an HBO? Not sure. Not sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping that it's HBO Showtime, something like that, where they'll have a budget to play with. Yeah. Maybe only give us, you know, the 10 episodes or 15 episode seasons instead of trying to make it into a normal TV show of like 30 episodes or whatever they do now. Right. And and they can take more uh, risks there. You know? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So, so all right. Cool. So be looking forward to that. And as news comes out for it, uh, we'll definitely uh, make sure to include that here for all of y'all interested in it. Um, and speaking of risks, um, DC certainly took a risk this week with Heroes in Crisis number one. 
Uh, we're going to review that book. Uh, won't spoil it because it just came out. Um, but uh, as we said, uh, last week was all about Batman Damned. This week, still about Batman Damned, uh, but also about uh, Heroes in Crisis, a brand new uh, miniseries. Uh, I believe it's nine parts now. It got bumped up from seven. Um, but uh, what did you guys think of the first uh, issue that we got uh, this week? Um, I, I flipped through. I, I, I didn't read all the way through. I, I, didn't, I just flipped through, and it seemed to me, at least, um, you know, it, it was it was a lot of dialogue. There was a lot of uh, talking. It seemed like it was like doing a lot of interviews. And then um, I got really confused when Holly Quinn was trying to stab Booster Gold. Um, but other than that, it just it just seemed like it was really slow. Um, so I was just like, you know, I, I wasn't quite sure where they're trying to go with it. Um, and you know, to be honest, I, I just was like, um, for me, it was, it was something that I think I, I just want kind of want to wait on and, and get the, I guess, get, get a better break on all the story before I decide to spend money on it. So I might just wait for it to come out and trade. Um, yeah. from, from what I've been, from what I've been seeing, um, and, and I saw an article that was talking about it. Um, uh, it seems like that might be the way to go with this. Um, just, uh, I, I guess, I guess a lot of people weren't too thrilled about how the first issue went. So my, my question was, is like, um, so those characters that stuff happened to, who are they? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know any yeah. of them. I didn't know like any of those characters really. Yeah. I mean, there of course, was a couple there, I knew, there, but... well, there was the one big one that we're pretty much sure everybody's freaking out about. But like some of the other ones, I didn't know. So I'm like, wait, is this like a first appearance book? Are these like three or four first appearances in this book? Like, what's yeah? You know, and why is that honest. guy laying in the field? I don't know. Yeah, what's going on with that? <laughs> so I don't know. I thought it was, I don't know. I was pretty intrigued by it. Like, I want to read the next issue for sure. Yeah, and just see. Like, I want to understand what happened because someone gets blamed for it though they seemingly don't have any clue why they're being blamed for it right as being as vague as i can be here yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I mean i it was an interesting read i i kind of felt like it went more for like you know they're like hey look um donny cates did some stuff Let's kind of follow along yeah. with that and be shocking. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like to me, it went for that like shock factor. Yeah. Um, and it just did that over and over again um, without really moving any type of plot along. So like a bunch of certain things happened, but not much happened in terms of like developing the story to know where it's going or anything, you know? So um, it, it, like you said, I'm curious, I guess I'll, I'll see where the story goes. But I, I don't know. If I was yeah. gonna grade it, I would probably give it like a, I don't know. So I want to say three out of five, but I'm. I'm well, that know. makes it just average. So. Yeah, so three out of five. Yeah, that's what I would but, give it. But the art was good. The art was yeah, very good. Yeah. That's what I will say. I did look good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, it's a nine issue series, so I mean, yep. I, I mean. This could just be, you know, j just the beginning. They're building up slow, and then, you know, because they had nine issues to fill out, so you don't want to, you know, just go crazy. But um, it's still, it's still, you know, I don't know. I, I guess like I'm, I'm approaching it tentatively just because I, I think about, uh, you know, the other things that, um, you know, I'm collecting now that that you know have long built out, you know, just stories, and it's just like I don't know if I can add a nine issue series, you know, to that as well. It's just like ah, that's kind of. <laughs> yeah. with, I mean, just because was it, um, you know, extermination, uh, old man Hawkeye, which is you know is getting close to the end, but not exactly. Um, Doomsday Clock, uh, the Infinity War, whatever that's mm -hmm. you know Infinity was, however that's gonna go. I mean, you know, you have all those ones, and then to add this on top of that, and then whatever is gonna come next. Well, we also, I mean, yeah, think about it. This week we also had Justice League Odyssey come out. So right. another miniseries. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's just like we're being assaulted by miniseries. Well, you know, it's funny because it's like you know, instead of events like the you know, like Marvel, well, no, no events, but a lot of damn miniseries. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. Death of Inhumans, yeah. extermination. Blah, 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 right. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's just you know, it's like no events, but we're sure gonna push yeah. the limit on that. 
you know. Um, what like, I'm with this with this story, I think I'm more curious not about the story itself, but how they're going to um, undo some of the things that happened. Like, what will that story be where they have to undo some of these things? Um, we have Booster Gold, so time travel. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's kind of. I, I hate when they use time travel. It's just such an easy, easy out. You know, yeah. reset the timeline. Yeah, that show up. Oh, oh Odyssey is supposed to be an ongoing. Oh. Is it? So It'll be canceled. Saying, yeah, that's why he said it won't last. Oh yeah. Oh. So Bill and Ted show up with the phone booth and Rufus. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it'll be called Justice League. Excellent. <laughs> be awesome to each other. The, the, the <laughs> toughest part, though, I mean, like, like I was, you know, kind of alluding to before, is that, you know, these miniseries, for the most part, it, it's at least five issues. I mean, it's not a heavy commitment, but, like, nine is, it, it, it is. Yeah, well, once, you, once you get past, like, like, you know, six, you know, it's like going into eight, you know, and and up, that's a, that's a heavy commitment to make. So it's just like, you know, yeah. I, I think... For like myself, like a, it's just you know really it's it's tough to sit there and be like okay I'm gonna collect all this without at least you know having um you know a little bit of skepticism to figure out what it is. So you know, I I mean hopefully it's good and if it is you know I I still think you know for myself I might set it out and just pick it up and trade rather than um you know go ahead and and, and just drop the money every month to go ahead and pick up issue by issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stay Puff says I didn't connect with Heroes in Crisis. It was okay for me, but I don't think I'll get all nine issues. I'll wait for the trade, which is okay, yeah. what you said too. So, mm-hmm. uh, what do you give it uh, out of five stars? I said three out of five. Where are you at with it? You mean? Being... Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'll go first. Um, just because the art was so good, mm-hmm. I would I would be about the same. It just like kind of a, it. The art made it an average book to me yeah because i mean it was a, it was a, it was a ton of dialogue they throw us in a setting where we have no clue what exactly is going on um they did a kind of like a bait and switch thing yeah they re- they really did so it wasn't it didn't meet my expectations of what it was supposed to be or the hope that i had going into it you know what i'm saying right. but it still looked good so. yeah I think right when you kind of think you're figuring things out, it's like, ooh, let's flip the script. Right. Yeah. So I haven't, like, I haven't, yet, I have yet to see anybody say that they absolutely loved it. So. Yeah. How about you, Chris? Where are you at out of five stars? Um, I, I'm with you. I give it like a three. I mean, like I said, mm-hmm. I, I didn't read through all of it. I, I just kind of like flipped through and then just because I, you know, I looked at how much dialogue and it, and it just seemed like it was really slow paced and, um, you know, wasn't quite sure where it was going to go and just, you know, I mean, all things considered, I, I just, I just didn't know what was going to happen, but I mean, the art looked nice. Um, I just wish that there was a little bit more to it. Um, maybe I'm just being a little bit too impatient with it, you know, being a nine issue series, but, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I think three out of five is, is fair. I think that yeah. that's a good, a good assessment of it. Yeah, no, I don't think you're um, being too impatient. You know, that first issue, uh, you know, it's supposed to set up the story and stuff, but it's supposed to give you like a good hook and like want you to, you know, read the rest of it. And we're sitting here like, eh, you know, so yeah. it didn't really do its job in, in that regard. No, and that that's the toughest part. It's just like, you know, if you're going to, if, if you have any kind of like, just like, oh, well, you know, I could pick it up, I could take it or leave it. Yeah. You know, like, oh, that's yeah. not good right away. That, like, that, exactly. You know, it's got to be something where like, you know, you're going to be like, no, dude, this book, you, you can't go home without it. Like, you have to pick mm-hmm. this up. It's like, you have, to, I can't wait for the trade. I have to know what's next. I have to get that next issue. Yeah. yeah. That's when you know yeah. you have a good first issue. Yep. Yeah. So, um, a Odyssey by Matt Fraction or a different series? J Rock says it's different. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, Brian says, uh, interestingly, adding the two issues will potentially end the series around the same time as um, DDC um, Doomsday Clock number 12. If uh, both stay on current schedules, of course, is that a coincidence? Hmm. I think that uh, DC is smart about planning things. Um, like, you know, and of course, you can't like plan for unexpected events or whatever, sicknesses and stuff. Yeah. Um, for example, um, it was uh, extermination. The final issue was pushed back to December. 
Extermination number five. Yeah. I think it has to do with Ed Brisson or something, you know, just keeping up with the book. But anyways, um, I, I think that there is uh, some sort of design to that is, is my answer to Brian. You agree with that? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think that's definitely, uh, I think that's definitely something that they're going to try to make, um, you know, last as long as they can. Where it's just like, you know, they, they know what they want to do and they, they're going to try to, you know, see if they can coincide it and if they can, slide the two together that would be you know that would be yeah. kind of cool as well but you know i yeah I, I think that that's a smart thing to do just to kind of have it scheduled to end at the same time I, I think that i've always said that i think dc takes uh more care with their universe than um than marvel does i think marvel mm -hmm. kind of uh likes to just you know just throw things at the wall and see what sticks exactly um yep. and and so you know when, when you have something like that it's tough because you know you have to really try to account for things that you know normally you wouldn't think about just like all right well you know what's going on here and this and that and it's just it's really tough to kind of keep that together whereas dc is really like tight about it where it's like look we know where we want this to go next we will know how we want it to tie into the past and that's what we're going to go with it so um you know i i think yeah. that's just you know the dc formula playing out the way it normally does right Exactly. Um, Brian followed up with a statement. He said, uh, Blue Wang could certainly uh, resolve apparent issues from the first issue. Um, yeah, he could. Definitely. Um, so that would kind of wrap up there. We still have a lot of unanswered questions, too, from uh, from Rebirth, which was mm -hmm. like, two years ago now. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So when uh, Doomsday Clock wraps up, hopefully we'll have some answers there. Right. You know, Dr. Manhattan, you know, possibly resetting at, at this point, things at this point we've all got to go back and reread dc universe <laughs> yeah you know or yeah. dc rebirth sorry that's true because i mean so yeah like, i mean it's been a long time and and yeah you know that's something that you know i i honestly didn't even give much attention to where it's just like because it was supposed to be you know you know all self-contained and 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 you know ready to go and it just seems like you know doomsday clock they really like you know they just kind of like slowed everything down to a crawl and just like uh why are we even here like what's going on with this so this event supposed to help to explain what happened here but i mean what are we like two years removed from rebirth about that yeah if not more yeah, yeah i think it was 2016 yeah yeah so i mean th th that that's a tough one to i mean like you said yeah justin we need a review because mm -hmm. Honestly, I mean, how we got to here, and then to go back to that moment again is—it's it's almost like oh. a for the Fight Club, where you see it, and and you know, it ends up, you know, it, the movie starts at the end pretty much, and then they take you back to how everything happened. It's just like, and then once you get back to the ending, and you're like, oh yeah, so that's how we got here, I guess, you know. But I mean, maybe they'll give us a refresher in Doomsday Clock. Well, I mean, they usually do give you something in the beginning of the book. It's just like, you know, this happened and this happened and that happened. And so here we go. You know, like, I, I appreciate stuff like that. So I talking about miniseries and stuff. Um, I did want to mention something. Came out today. I was excited about it. Really loved the first volume miniseries. And it's kind of like its own thing. So it's not going to tie into like Doomsday Clock or anything. Um, the follow up. To um, Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, yes. White Knight, right? Yeah. Uh, the next one's called uh, Batman: Curse of the White Knight. Yeah. Ooh. Azrael. Yeah. Azrael. Yep. The best looking Azrael art ever. Go check out Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, Twitter feed, and you will see two pieces of art from this series. It looks great. The Azrael looks sick. Yes. So I think I can pull it up here. No crazy claws, just an awesome sword. No hot claws like that. No hot claws. I'm over here. My claws cut the bread and the butter. <laughs> yeah, so excited. And also, uh, Curse of the White Knight will be under the black label. Yes. Perfect place for it. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Time to see Joker's dong too. <laughs> Joker did a thing actually, but he he just used a weapon instead. 
There she is. There she blows. Get ready for my next book announcement for 2019. Yeah, and then if you scroll up just a little bit, he's got one more picture. of It's got the Joker, Batman, and Azrael. Yep. Yeah, that looks so good. That's just like a really, really cool Azrael, you know? Yeah. Very close to what we originally saw him as, but just more badass. Let's see if I can close this. Update. Uh, okay, update on White Knight. Okay, this came out. Wait, what? June twenty first. Yeah, that's a pen oh, tweet. You gotta go. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. It's got a whole bunch of stuff from six hours ago. So you don't need to know anything about Azrael before reading volume two. I guess he was doing like a Q and A thing. Nice, must have been. Uh, yeah. DC put a horse under his blanket. Um. Oh wow! They gave him the old Colleone. If you could draw any team up, what would you pick? Gambit and Constantine. Ooh. Cool. Good choice. That would be pretty crazy. Azrael in the 90s. Perfect time for him to be reinvented. To nice. Uh, any chance we'll see uh, the question in your upcoming projects? Which uh, means cool. cameo, it's but it's not. Black label. That That's something that um, I, I think is, is kind of There it is funny yeah. um yeah, i was talking with my shop owner about it and i know some people were just like i don't think they would go this way and it doesn't make any sense but i, I guess the black label has been you know or, or will be uh you know getting sensitive maybe it's just a batman simple. book i don't know like, like batman damned or whatever but mm -hmm. um that, that, that's what i heard that, like they're gonna be censored and all that stuff so it's just like not gonna be quite you know it's not gonna be what they promised, what they what they said they were going to give to us. So, yeah. any uh, subsequent printings of the first issue will be uh, will be censored as well. And they, they really quickly did the digital censoring. Yeah. So. That we were joking. I forget where it was. I don't know if I was talking to you guys or somebody else, but we were like, "Oh, well, um, Harley is solicited for issue number two. I wonder what they would show there." I mean. Um, at who this knows. point, who knows? I mean, I feel like Holly you can get away with with no real problem. It's just, you know, Batman himself. Is, is, you can't go full frontal with Harley like they did with her. No. Him. No. Nothing like that. But I'm just, I'm just saying that like, like, there's, there's, there's certain things you could probably get away with with her that you wouldn't. Like, for example, you know, Wonder Woman's supposed to be getting a black, you know, uh, black label. And it's just like, you, there's no way you can, you can go full frontal, you know, with her, you know, at all, at all, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you can get away with something. You can get away with, um, you know, something with Holly. Whereas Wonder Woman is like, hey, you can't touch that. She she's too like can't she's too this. well known. I mean, that's what happened. The same thing that that's what happened with the Batman. It's just the fact that people are like this is Batman. Like that, you know, we know him from, you know, everything. And it's just like you cannot have that because, you know, people identify you know that with kids and all the rest of it and everything else and. So that that's what happens because he's you know so you know marketable and profitable character that of course you're gonna get backlash on that. But had it been yeah. you know had it been like Constantine or somebody, nobody would have cared because you know Constantine is not the same. He's not even in the same you know wheelhouse as as Batman is. So, um, you know, I I think I think that uh the days of seeing you know the nudity and stuff like that are over. Um, they might imply it. They may. They may have, you know, um, I guess, you know, censorship where it's like, you know, digitally blocked out, you know, going forward. Yeah. Um, but if it doesn't contribute to the story, then, you know, what's the big well, yeah, deal? No, exactly. If it doesn't, that's not a, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that it should. What I am saying is just that, you know, any penises it, in my comics, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is just that, you know, it, it's, it, it sucks that, you know, they go from being like we're gonna do this to this, but it's just, but you know if you're a sensible person about it, you know that there's nothing else that they can do. Like, like I mean, it's just like there, there's, I mean, this isn't like where you know, this isn't like you know, 15, 20, 
years ago where maybe you could get away with that because you know now there's movie deals and all types of stuff around that you have to be careful of that you don't want people walking away from you don't mm -hmm. want you know you don't want to really rock the boat too too much so i mean you know if you're going to do you know just those grittier type stories with um you know the characters that you know if you're going to do those type of darker stories that are more adult you kind of have to stick with characters that aren't as well known if you want to be able to put them out there with you know minimal backlash right but so um as a brian said uh yeah so who dad asked a question and then brian b uh, answered it for us so thank you yeah. Uh, who that says uh dc just said that they will not produce a second print of batman damn at this time is this true um well i mean you look at their sales figures which you don't have yet um but if you look at those and any book that does those types of numbers they're, they're gonna do second printing so that being said it's uh, gonna be um edited out um and then uh, brian says uh issue two does not come out until november 21st um so they're not really gonna rush it back out so um yeah, yeah. But any type of book where it pulls in numbers like it did, um, this, this, they'll have second printings for it. Yep. Then we got to get the second print because we got to have everything. <laughs> Complete the collection. I'm trying to see if I can find it now. Yeah. I don't think anything is solicited for, for second printings yet, but... So, all right, cool. All right, so what do you guys got uh, coming up on your uh, on your channels in your future here? Uh, I need to make a video. I don't. It doesn't even matter what. I just need to make one <laughs> random video. <laughs> yeah, something. You oh, like funny. silently reading a comic? Right, right. Oh, hello! I did not notice you there. That's the piece theater. <laughs> <laughs> so some 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 stuff soon. Sorry, everybody. Something will happen soon. Don't worry. Okay, cool. Thank you for the tease. <laughs> <laughs> how about you? How about you, Chris? I uh, do mm. my new comic book day haul, and um, I have some back issues to show as well. So, um, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and try to get those videos up um, this weekend, if possible. Um, Saturday is going to be a little bit tight because I got a lot of stuff going on. But uh, yeah. hopefully Sunday is a nice, lazy Sunday, and I can go ahead and, um, you know, put that stuff up and everything so um I'm, I'm definitely gonna shoot to have a video done by this weekend um you know just to kind of show off some stuff that i have to you know show you guys and everything so um that's mm -hmm. pretty much it nothing else really special or big happening on the channel just you know showing some books when i get my chance to go ahead and make those videos so um there will be more stuff coming out from my channel so you know just pop in from time to time and check it out yeah all right cool definitely do that um, who that says that uh, Erod posted from DC website? That's why I asked. Yeah, I was trying to look to see if I could find what that might be. Um, I haven't myself heard anything, um, but that doesn't mean I always hear everything. You said they found a new Star Girl for this show. It cast uh, Star Girl. I can't remember who she was. I don't think I'd ever seen her in anything, but yeah. Batman and He Man in the Resistance. Yeah, I can't find anything. Uh, who that? If you have that uh, that link or that news piece from him, uh, definitely uh, shoot it over to me because if that's true, I, I want to read that because um, I don't want to be uh, misinforming folks. Um, so we'll then we can do that. a follow up on next week's show. That's right. That's right. Okay, so I'll stop looking for now. Um, yeah, so I got the uh, the Venom uh, review that will be coming out uh, next week. So I'll be doing that. Um, comics, of course, sold way down on comics, um, but uh, we potentially will have an auction coming up. Uh, more details on that uh, as we have them. I got to discuss with uh, with my friends here on the panel. See what we can do. Uh, he sent it to Chris. Okay, cool. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, probably still gotta do that damn video, that history video. Um, I've been, uh, putting it off for a few weeks, so I'll probably, uh, try to really do that, uh, in the near future here. And, um, I am, uh, trying to downsize on some comics. So check out, uh, I have my, uh, JLS Comics Instagram 
but I also have one. I know a lot of you follow it. It's called uh, Shop at JLS Comics um, with some underscores in the middle. Um, and I'm going to be listing a bunch of books there um, as well as uh, maybe on Facebook. I'm trying to avoid um, eBay if I can. Um, so I'm going to try that route. Try my hand at the old uh, IG thing. See what don't I can even, move. Don't even give me started on eBay. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I know. With the holds and stuff. Oh, yeah. gosh. Um, so, yeah. So look to that. Um, and I'll put up links and stuff as, as I post. But um, if you're interested in some things, I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff here. Oh, it's funny. Um we're talking about that. I just pulled out a Nightfall book. Um, I just grabbed one off the shelf. It's a Nightfall book. Um, yeah, so I got a whole run on a Nightfall. A couple of Night's Quest, I think, are in there. Um, let's see. Night, yeah. Yeah, here's a, here's a uh, Alan Grant. It's a cool cover. Shadow of the Bat. Nice. Anyways, yeah, a couple big lots. That'll be coming up. So yeah, look for my Instagram there. But uh, that'll do it, folks, for uh, for this episode. Um, if you like it, don't forget to um, let us know by hitting the like button. Um, and if you want more content like this, um, subscribe here. But also subscribe to each of our individual channels. That's Boston Chris Comics, um, Exile State Comics, and then um, Strictly Comics as well. So um, hit the bell, too, so you would be the first to know when we uh, either stream or upload. Um, also, be sure to check out comicbooked.com. Justin puts up the new list every Monday, so you can check out all the new books coming out uh, for the week. Bring that list to your shop, and you'll be armed with everything you need to know. Um, does that. Uh, news articles going up all the time. We put one up for uh, Norm Brayfogle today, as a matter of fact, so you can check that out there. It's comicbooked.com. Don't forget to check out our friends at uh, Comic Frontline as well. They're on YouTube. They have comicfrontline.com, um, and they are all over social media, as we all are. Speaking of social media, links are in the description for the video. Um, and I'm going to ask you guys, if you can, uh, to listen and uh, give a review to the podcast. Um, you can check it out on iTunes. SoundCloud, Stitcher, Podbean, we're on Google Play, pretty much everywhere you have your favorite podcasts. Um, and if you want any type of reading material, statues, uh, merchandise, kind of related to some of the topics that we talked about, I have a link down there. It's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash JLS comics. There's hundreds of items in there that are right at your fingertips. I put up a bunch of uh, Omnis today. Uh, there's a really cool uh, statue of Batman that is a, a Norm Brayfogle statue from the DC Collectible series, um, for example. A couple other stuff. That's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and uh, participating as well. And we will see you in the next video. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. See you later.